Some time ago I made a video about the Apple USB dongle that I was pretty excited about. Now, although I'm not an Apple fanboy, to put it mildly, I had to admit that the audio quality was pretty good. And then my search for something comparable started. The first attempt to beat the Apple product was made by Ugreen, but even though it was a nice attempt, it wasn't really a match. The Apple product was still better. And today is my next attempt, and this time it's something I bought on AliExpress, the LC2100, or as the website says, the Allen Fan CS 43131 USB C digital to analog converter, Type C to 3.5mm jack headphone amp, 32 bits, 384 kHz DSD 256 lightning decode adapter, audio hi fi amp. Nailed it. So cramming in as much technical terms as possible into a product name did get my attention. But seriously, uh, what interests me the most was the 32 bits and 384 kilohertz. As regular viewers by now may already know, 32 bits and 384 kilohertz does not guarantee quality. But it is an indication, which is reason enough for me to make it interesting to buy it and to make a review about it. Now, for simplicity, I will just refer it from now on as the LC2100, just to make it clearer. The digital to analog converter comes in a nice aluminum or aluminium box. Besides the digital to analog converter, there's also a little cable and a USB-C to USB-A converter. On the outside side, there's not much going on. There's a USB-C input, a 3.5mm jack output for the headphones, and there's a small button, which is a multi-function button. When you press once to pause the playback, twice to play the previous song, and three times to play the next song. Now, I couldn't get this to work on my Windows 11 laptop, but it did work for my Android. The color of the light is green when playing a PCM sound, which is the regular sound. The blue is for playing DSD, now, of course, DSD is a really cool feature, but my guess is that 99,9% .9 of the people out there who buy this, well, don't even use it. Now, some extra information about DSD. For those who want to know what DSD is, this is a completely different way of producing audio where a PCM stream will give the exact power of each frequency at an interval, the sampling rate and the resolution, DSD will only look at the previous sample and say if it's louder or more quiet. It does this at a certain interval. Now, there has been a lot of debate if this is the best way to generate audio. Some will say DSD, others will say PCM. Blind tests have been done with mixed results. Some say DSD, others say PCM, and others say that the test wasn't even done correctly. Now, I'm rather neutral about this. I've listened to DSD files with and without MQA, and I do hear an ever so slight difference. But it is so minute that I even wonder if it's in the recording itself. Also, I wonder if the DSD fanboys will hear the difference themselves. But that all doesn't matter. As long as it makes you happy, who am I to complain? Now what grabbed my attention again is what is inside. There are two chips in there. The before mentioned a Cirrus Logic CS43131, which is a high performance digital to analog converter with integrated headphone driver and impedance detection. It's part of the Master Hi-Fi audio series that Sears Logic has on offer. This is a pretty good digital to analog converter that has 32-bit resolution, 384 kHz, and it does that at 132 decibels dynamic range and minus 115 total harmonic distortion. It can drive a headset up to 600 ohms, but my guess is that it's not the best idea since it doesn't have an external power source it may struggle to drive that much of an impedance. Then there's the SA9312L. Now that one is a bit of a mystery and it took a lot of digging to figure out what it does. My first guess was that it was a USB bridge, since the Cirrus Logic is just a digital to analog converter. 
Now I found this diagram which clearly shows USB audio with the SA9323 with the chip running at 96 to 192 kilohertz and 24 bits. If it was just a USB bridge then there would be no need for that. And besides that, uh, there is a USB Type-C controller just above it. Could it be that an error was made on the picture the LNE fan uses? Now in the past I have seen components made by Savitech. Uh, that one was the Bravo SA9023, a USB digital audio processor that didn't impress me that much. Also on the Savitech website I found this. Okay, it may be small, but it clearly shows you the SA9123L. So my educated guess is that LNE fan made a bit of a boo boo and switched those numbers. If you have another guess, please leave it in the comments. And now comes the part where I show you the datasheet. Well, sorry, I couldn't find one. And with me, a lot of other people can't. Uh, there is some speculation on some fora, dead links, guesses, uh, but nothing concrete. And if I had to make a guess, to make a guess, the SA9123L is an upgraded version of the 23. And the 32, which is used in this device, is again an upgraded version of that one. But I can't provide you with any more information. I do have the data sheet for the 9023, but since the specs have changed so much, there's no real point in showing you. Okay, I'm showing it. The info is too old, but okay, let's head over to the listening sessions. Let's start that. I was pretty pleased with the overall performance of the LNE fan. It was accurate pleasant and lively sound. It could drive the Biodynamic DT990 Pro 250 ohms with ease. The bass was powerful even in the lower registers and sometimes even a bit too overpowered where the oomph gets too oomphy. The mids were very accurate again and pleasing and it didn't get annoying as with a lot of other portable digital to analog converters. The highs were sharp and very precise. The stereo crosstalk was also rather good, but not as good as I had hoped. Now stereo crosstalk is always a bit of an issue with these tiny little devices, so this isn't something new. Let's head over to the results from Rightmark Audio Analyzer to see what these tell us. As with my listening session, Rightmark was also very pleased with the results, giving it an overall of good. The frequency response was even excellent. The one poor there is the total harmonic distortion plus noise in decibels. Now this means that there is a 1 kHz tone that is produced and then measured of how much unwanted noise is created besides that 1 kHz tone. Now there are two ways to represent this noise. In an absolute number, thus in decibels like in this case, and a percentage which makes it more relative. This port doesn't mean there's a lot of noise going on, making the audio unhearable. Absolutely not. The total harmonic distortion is very difficult to beat, as is the stereo crosstalk. Only hi-fi components are able to get decent scores. So with an overall score of good, this is just a pretty good digital to analog converter. And now for my conclusion, the LNE fan CS43, no, no, I'm not going to say it again, the LC2100 is a very good portable digital to analog converter. It has good components, for at least for as far as I could tell. It had a nice listening session, and it got a good in Rightmark audio analyzer, and all of that for just 44 euros. But is it enough to beat the Apple digital to analog converter, the one that bothers me that much? Well, sadly not. When we look at the Rewritemark Audio Analyzer results and compare them, and all of these are measured at 24 bits and 48 kilohertz, because that's the maximum the Apple can handle, we see that the Apple results are ever so slightly better. The differences are tiny. But the noise level, dynamic range, total harmonic distortion and the intermodular distortion plus noise were all in favor of the Apple with just a tiny margin. Only on the stereo crosstalk front, 
the LC2100 was ever so slightly better. So is this the Apple beater that I was hoping to find? No. But if you buy it, you will not have made a bad buy. I can definitely recommend this product with ease. So with this ending, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.